people will reach out by the, the pastor of the congregation in Israel we, uh, oh. uh, we fellowship with, so that would be kind of cool. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Okay. Israel, huh? Bless the Lord. Okay. Yeah. How you guys know each other? Through a mission trip or something like that? Yeah. I, I, he, he's the pa- I mean, I, I'm guessing... Uh, I'm guessing his congregation or group of congregations is probably the biggest in in Israel. Oh, and, wow. uh, they And we were, you know, when we went there, they were the main congregation that we fellowshiped with. Uh, well, I mean, it's hard to say that, but, but they were certainly a main congregation we did stuff with. And uh, I didn't really realize at the time, but I guess they were fairly new at that time. And it was like 12 years and 10 years ago, or two trips. Oh, wow. And uh, they, they uh, continued, you know, they continued to grow. And, and I, I get their emails all the time. And uh-huh. he, he said something about they're, they're being persecuted. They, they built a building. And they finally, they've gotten all the permits. They finally got all built and it's ready to move in, but they need a final permit. And the Orthodox are completely against them and have been for a long time, but I guess they got some power with the city council to block the permit. Oh, wow. And uh, so, you know, he said, if you want to keep updated on this, let me know and I'll update you. So I sent him an email. I've been receiving his, his emails for a decade, but I've never emailed him. Sure. And I didn't know if he would, I didn't know if he would remember me because I was one of the people on the trip. But, mm. uh, Anyway, he, he said he did, and um, mm. uh, he, he said, you know, when he's going through the U.S., he'd love to meet up. So, mm. anyway, that was kind of cool, you know. Yeah, that's it. Is cool. God bless them. Amen. Hallelujah. Update us on what's going on there. So, sure. sure. Yeah, John have a few guests checking in, so he's gonna check in a little bit later. So we have Tim on there. I think Tim. Uh, more than one person, whole family might be there. So let's see hello as well. So yeah. mm-hmm. hello, we're here. Huh. Hey everybody, Wes and Dan and Brad. <laughs> okay. <Hi. laughs> where where the everybody else? Mm-hmm. I was a little Texas guy there. That's a good Texas guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. Vance, good to see you, man. So, uh, been a while. Sorry, the irregularity of our meetings. We uh, all, all teams of thought we got busy so much. So, we all scandals. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, not a problem. It's good to hear y'all's voice again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep us in prayer. We're really getting busy. Our uh, busy season kick in. So, John barely have a time to himself. He work all day long. I think uh, is John there? I think John's already on. So yeah, I just I'm here. How's everybody doing? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, pretty good today. Actually, John, I think this is the first time I've heard heard your voice. You kidding me? <laughs> then you gotta take I can over. Still speak. It's good to hear your voice. Too, <laughs> still doing all right out there? Not, is it warm down there? It's hot. It's hot. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. It's Texas. It's hot. Of, that's right. That time of year. Oh, what's the temperature look like? I don't know. What is it, Wes? I mean, we're getting some. We're, uh, they're getting some weather coming in. So tomorrow oh. morning it's supposed to be like seventy-two, but then it's supposed to jump up. It, it's it's not really. I mean, it's been hotter here, obviously, yeah. but uh, um, it's it's really humid. So it's it's. Mm. It's not fun to be outside all the time. There you go. Mm. That's time to barbecue. Get team. Uh, get Wes uh, over and get some barbecue going on. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway. Um. Uh. Wes, while you pray for us, uh, we start our day. So. Mm. Father, we thank you that we can come before your throne, that although we are in different places, scattered about in your world, we can all lay down our our personal lives, agendas, 
cares of the world. Mm. We can worship at your altar, Lord. Mm. That we can ascend your holy mountain. That we can seek your faith mm. and know you. Mm. Lord, bless us that we are filled tonight with you. Mm. Your, your wisdom, your love, your truth. Mm. Lord, that we are transformed. Mm. That we are like you. Mm. That we can come down from this mountain and bring your glory mm. to wherever you send us, each in our different places. Mm. Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Mm. Um, may the Lord bless you, and uh, we will continue our topic on the family culture of the Lord. And uh, I tried to do a brief review here before we carry on. Uh, today, basically, we are talking about God's idea of a family or His. Uh, uh, intend for family. So, in order to, uh, to, 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 to channel into that topic, we've been discussing, preparing some contest. Prior to that, we're talking about the necessary for us to recognize, uh, God's family is a culture and uh, in it, God's people are to become a, a called out people to be immersed or taught uh, into more than a spiritual uh, life uh, that come with a spiritual way of life and coming down from above but uh, much over uh, more over we on earth that is in heaven we are supposed to be the people be a light horse to the world to reflect and even instruct others or disciple others than a weight of culture and this culture is a culture of godly love. And in it, the church also or called other people of God also is ordained by God. It's like a training ground or a community for this kind of way of love to be manifested. In prior session, we particularly emphasize the important to differentiate it, the kind of love that a man-centered or self-seeking versus the kind of love that the Lord Jesus Christ tell us to endure and able to practice. With this, uh, turn with me to John the Gospel. Let's look at this about becoming this, in this ministry or this body of people that are able to live without this way of culture, this culture way of love as the people of God, let's look at this in 15th chapter, when talking with discipleship, telling them about bearing fruits as good branches on the wine himself, the Lord continued to tell them that this is how you are to practice kind of love by actually abiding or practice his teaching. And the teaching is basically we, we today we talk and touch one aspect of it. It's much to do with the culture, family culture of God. Let's look at this. He said in 15th chapter now, in 9, he said, As the Father loved me, we see the order, so I have loved you. Now remain my love. So we know this is not as if uh, a earthly father love a earthly son, even there is shadow of types of it. But here the love speaking about its holy love. It's a godly love. Eventually we see in the New Testament uh, in many places allude to and uh, expounded upon. For one example, let's turn to this. is uh, Peter. We know this audience include Peter. He understand and comment this later on. So uh, while this point uh, visited before the before Jesus Christ died, uh, Peter's mind was not open, but later on his mind was open. We see, he understand very well what, how this 
love or this way of life supposed to work it out. Let's turn to Second Peter, in one five. So for this very reason, because they know him and able to partake his life or his divine nature, and escape from the corruption of the world, God's people are supposed to be for this very reason. In one five, and make every effort to enter your faith, goodness, to goodness, knowledge, and the knowledge of self-control, or a sound mind, and a sound mind, perseverance,、um, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness. My version said brotherly kindness. Other version said brotherly love, which is um、uh, you all aware it's basically. What Jesus told Peter after his resurrection by the Lake Galilee, you know, do you love me? Three times ask Peter. We see there are two different ways of expressing love, but brotherly love and then brotherly kindness. Here back to Peter, in the love, which is agape love. Amen. Hallelujah. We see from a filial love or brotherly love, a human affectionate love to godly love. Was designed as a pathway for us to practice and know the love of the God. This was a well expounded in the book of First John as well. So we're talking about if you don't love one another, then we know the love of God is、uh, not evidence in our lives. We also addressed,、uh, as I recently shared, this fellowship need be kept pure and holy. And those discards this way of light or this way of life is to be discarded or put in the right place. And、uh, speaking about testing the spirit, speaking about how to love one another, and、uh, by that we know that we are practicing God's love. Amen. Hallelujah. But according to let's turn to it. First John, we see that this this loving relationship, this we practicing love. Present brotherly relation, brotherly love relationship was emphasized as a family culture. Basically, different word to express it. In three, one three said, "We proclaim to you what we see and heard." This is John. So we first mentioned Peter. Now another person who Jesus, they were speaking the same thing. What they see and heard, even it is more than. Hallelujah! More than Mary, Jesus Christ was fulfilled. Uh, one fulfilled the prophecy as a Messiah, but he carried himself with himself a culture, which、uh, in our place is speaking about the kingdom. You、uh, know, so it's almost the same thing. But、um, look at this: is when proclaiming what we have seen and heard, so that you also have a fellowship with us, means that they can have access. And able to be taught or planted, like in the garden of a wine, in this way they were planted or built up into a culture. And then our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We make、uh, we write this to make our joy complete. It means that we were able to have no regret concerning the walk or the way of the obedience. To this way of life, which is the teaching. Back to John fifteen chapter now. So let's look at Jesus' idea. How this is going to、uh, be expressed and become impactful through God's people? He said, "If you obey my commands, fifteen ten said, if you obey my teachings, this way of love, this way of grace." This will of a culture we to live together. You will remain in my love, which is a culture, more than personal affectionate、uh, expressions of love. Just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain his love. Now that is very interesting because we know that he obeyed the father's commands is、uh, often misconstrued as if the father dictated him something, he do something. Uh, you know, but、uh, it's it's more than that. It's about Jesus Christ has been,、um, you know, taught 
by a heavenly culture, but the by the household culture and the kingdom culture for the father, and he was able to teach this, which is a the kind of a born again, born of a new life. The experience was supposed to be like in John the Gospel three chapter. I'm so sorry, we're not facing one another. You like uh, it's basically a solo voice here teaching. I hope you catch with the scriptures. And uh, in three chapter for the same book, the Gospel John said. In 12, he's speaking to Nick Demon, said, I have spoken to you earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak heavenly things? What are those things? Evidently, those things in John, in First John, John expressed as the fellowship, the kind of culture, the kind of we, they relate to one another. As a father loved the son, now made known to the disciples, they were able to practice it. Therefore, in First John, John was able said, "For our fellowship is not with ourselves, but with the Father, the Son." And this was expressed by him explicitly to the believers that he was uh, addressing. Here, Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus in three chapter of John the Gospel. Basically, the heavenly things is a more than uh, you know heavenly reality, visions, visitations, or whatever we think. The heavenly things are, but it's a culture. It's a we how we love one another as God designed it or God intended it, which is a today's topic we talk about. The whole God intended for His family to be organized, how to how to how to how to be um, you know practiced, and uh, uh, we would. Will turn more to this, but before that, I want to express the idea that this way of love was not hidden from mankind. Rather, Jesus Christ came, revealed it, and bring to light. Also, bring the grace for it being actualized or uh, being made a provision for it, so that we can practice it. Now, uh. Before we go on to that topic, I want to talk about this, uh, uh, like, like a little bit of principle. So, what is the Word of God? And uh, how the Word of God actually made manifest? We often taught this we of a manifest. Often, it's saying that basically divinity, or the Lord, you know, um, His uh, divine life. Is a perfect sinless life, and in power life being expressed through a individual. But if we think it more, as I just allude to, evidently it's more than that. Its word become a flesh or may uh, dwell upon among us, and then branch it out, or become a family, become a mini member family. This is evidently is itself is a word made of flesh. Now that being said, then what that word entails and embodied, and this is trying to impart to the disciples or to Nick Demons and many other occasions. At the time they first heard it, they literally out their contest. Because they thought on one hindrance might be um um you know, um, hinder them to come to the full understanding what Jesus really meant uh, by him saying, I am going to reveal the Father to you, I reveal myself to you, and basically the things are going to become uh, real for you as a chosen people, God. One is that they continue uh, thinking about this almost as there's a narrowing perspective or there's a sitting about who Messiah is, how he come to fulfill the prophecy of the Old Testament or the in the past. The other one was uh, that when they look at all the things, even in, in Christianity as we know it, we often see that uh, we, the Word of God, taught, or the we whole uh, the understanding spiritual life or the divine life of God being expressed through his people oftentimes is pretty much centered around the individual, centered around the whole individual 
should find the expression, should find the, uh, the, the right feeling, whether in gifting or whatever it is. But the, seldom we understand it's first and foremost, it's a wheel of a culture with the people. And uh, this is a huge wheel uh, over the mind of a man. It's more than uh, modern men or even um, you know Christians after Christ. It's before Christ. It's through the ages the wheel is carrying the mind of man. And uh, we will visit that as well a little bit. Because when this wheel is taken away, we can then uh, overcome first, you know, individualism or the way of, as Paul and many others speaking about the love of self. But more importantly, understand how the grace of God actually works. If we are to be uh, grow and being able to 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 be able ministers of the gospel or the disciple other this way, we have to know how this actually works and give them the vision of how God's people function as a family for God. That being said, it turns with me to Colossians. We talk about the word. Uh, let me just use an example before we launch this. You know, today I was thinking about how to present the topic in my quiet time. I was uh, had a little bit of revelation, you know, um, in my dream or, you know, meditating state i thought i was writing some code in my in my in my dream whatever you know just uh, um, you know being able to write the code these days you do web design especially it's very interesting you do a coding then on the other side instantly reflect what your code can do which is become a picture shapes different arrangement you can visually see the layout of web page or some, you know, some interface in a browser or other uh, other screens, and uh, now you you are doing it with the coding, right? So the language so choose a multiple language can do that. There are different ways you can calculate that, but uh, when you write, uh, for example, a formula or a condition. And or you make some changes to the design of the things, and this language behind there are many language might combine together to do this job, and there are different sets of tools you can do it. But interesting enough, there is always a set of convention, so you can just randomly you can randomly present the content, but you can break the laws how the language wrong you know for example if else is a condition in javascript and you can't just choose okay if else i'm gonna write this way or i don't like this i'm gonna break it so you have to follow the convention you, there's a there's a way how this wrongs operate literally called operators or algorithms stuff like that so and um, my point in that those programming languages is controlling, not more than one zero here even, is controlling the visible part of an interface. Now thinking about this very, um, it's easily to borrow this example to apply how God operates. His word become a flesh. Imagine the flesh is a visible realm, like Jesus Christ talking demons, earthly things, basically. And then the other part is the things gone in the visible realm. But the visible realm has no clue how it actually operates. It may change, it may be able to borrow some functions on the front, you can do certain things. But literally everything is controlled or managed by the back end, those coding. So how you borrow this and understand when human activity and we normally uh, address these things in the natural existence, natural phenomena, how the world came from, where it's going, those kind of things about the creation. Uh, but if you understand 
we also make argument in modern Christians, you know, argument this is a, a God is an entity that give us morals, you know, sense morals. You can't really do without. It basically is a uh, it's, it's a consolidation and uh, the master or whatever give us the morals, impute those morals in man in society. But um, it's really, it's, yes, that may be true. Uh, that is very important to understand God in such aspects. But when we see what Christ is concentrating on, and the New Testament authors who were taught by God to build a new people, in a sense, out of the world, and to become them people, we see they have a different vision about what the Word of God actually is and how it's supposed to function. That being said, turn with me to Colossians. That's we will introduce then what God's concept, intent for family look like. And we look at Jesus' teaching today, mainly about that. I look to Genesis from there. So in Colossians, book Colossians, uh, Tim, are you there? Can you read it for me from 115 from there? So. Actually, from the before that, uh, in from time, on uh, go on. Uh, from nine, so sorry, it's from nine. All right. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. And asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will. Not all will. spiritual wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. And we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. And may please him in every way. Bearing fruit in every good work. Growing in the knowledge of God. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. So that you may have great endurance, patience, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Continue. He is the image of the He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. By him all things were created, even things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that everything, that, it, that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him, to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Mm. Um, and 21 said, once you are alienated from God and become his enemy in your mind because your evil deeds or evil ways of life, you will be hearers, it's a simple translation, should be the worded way you are ways of life. But th this is interesting. We see here is the ministry of reconciliation. And according to a plan of God. And this plan was in the beginning uh, in self or in situ forth, but not made known until Christ came. And when Christ came, he implemented the plan. He put it in effect the plan. Therefore, in a sense, he started a new creation. And we become the new creation people. But the message was in the beginning. In 15 said, he is an image. He is a visible expression. He is the browser, what you can see. 
I mean, in an invisible gun that is a programming language, the word, you know, the word become flesh in that sense. But um, how expressed it is not made known to us as yet, but it was through this, because this, everything was written. Like all the program language was given, all the browser given, all the machines were given in order to fulfill a, prop, a, a purpose. That is, we can, uh, you know, communicate the present information on the brothers and uh, put on the internet. You know, think about it, share a community, have a community over the internet. This is talking. So, but there is here the initiation of the things. And then you can see here, interesting enough, I want to emphasize something. In for by him all things were created, things in heaven on earth. And interesting enough, if we every by him everything created, how we reconcile that he himself is only one person, or one spiritual entity, or one son, you know, evidently he's not. So he said, who the son is? This is very interesting how the early apostles or how Jesus expressed himself, uh, you know, by telling them who he was. He is uh, the Son of God, he is the Son of Man, but much more than that, to the first John the Gospel, you know where I'm turning to, said in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. My point is that you can see there is an initiation the Bible talks about the return of the ancient ways. Basically, the original plan of God is expressed by Jesus. And because that original plan was set in stone, then God began to initiate it to create or activate uh, some, uh, everything else. So that is visible, invisible things on earth and things in heaven. Now, there is a... Paul began to talk about another array of this thing, different category almost, the same thing. He said, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. Oftentimes, this kind of things is considered spiritual entities or spiritual establishments in a realm. But uh, we, few has considered that they are actually only the head or representation of something. And not by themselves, they merely enjoy exalted place, or have authority power in that produced designation or dominion for no purpose. So what are those things that they represent? What enabled them to able to have a dominion and a power is something we seldom thinking about. Today I want to tell you those are things our cultures, our thoughts, our governing philosophies. So in this one, is a it's a, I'm gonna allude to scriptures to tell you this is how we're supposed to think, this is how Paul think at least in First Corinthians. Because it's important for us to understand until we have the family culture, the kingdom culture gone, the great consolation work of discipleship. It's, it's a castle in the air. There's no vision. There's no grace given to us to do a thing. Basically, we just become you know, people wandering. I don't know what we actually are doing. So, more often times, that is the case in Christian experiences. But I hope we you know, become that people God can enlighten us. We have the understanding of his mind, of his heart, his vision what means to be a holy people and uh, we rise up you know become that people he wants us to be in two chapter of the first corinthians he, in paul talking about the corinthian church we enamor by the gifts and their activities excited with what they have but they were not able to settle down to hear uh they were even because of things so distracted or so enamored them, uh, they so engrossed in it, they actually began to use that standard to judge Paul and the work of the Lord in their midst. Why is this happening? 
so cause great confusion and the danger even rejected Paul's leadership or Paul's ministry to them. And Paul has to bring them to the, the back to the track in six chapter. I'm sorry, in six words, the second Corinthians, first Corinthians, second chapter, first Corinthians, second chapter, six words now. We do, however, speak a message or teaching, a wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the ruler of this age who are coming to nothing. That is, their kingdoms, their ways of government, or their ways of uh, ruling uh, are going to come to an end. No, we speak God's secret wisdom, the wisdom that had been hidden, that is hidden from the beginning till now, revealed through Christ Jesus to them. And then they were, Paul tried to impart to the Corinthian church, our word study, and then God destined for our glory before time began. Glory means glorification or fulfillment, or that's what John's idea actually means. Our joy is complete, means there is no regret. Everything is fulfilled, everything is perfected in the will of God. Now, let's continue. None of the rulers of this age understood it. And we often think that none of the rulers of this age are basically only earthly entity. Absolutely not, because in Paul's idea means there is a spiritual or heavenly entities as well as earthly, the visible and invisible. That is, then the rulers, most importantly, are the ones that actually have a dominion, have a way influencing uh, the, how this world is run. And uh, with that, we're speaking, why the rulers? They're because they have a different wisdom to govern this world. Now rulers, uh, this is understood it. If they hand, for if they hand, they will not have crucified the Lord of glory. They were not resisted the Lord who bring things back to glory. Not then the Lord himself is one to be glorified, but he has reconciled everything so that all things can be reconciled back to the Father, and that the Father can glorify them all, that is, fill all in all. The glory of the Lord will fill all creation, all the earth, basically. And you know the story. But uh, So why the ruler rejected Jesus? Or crucify the Lord of glory, or the Lord that can even bring everything to its own glory. As they supposed to be, if they understand, this is the one can fulfill their destiny. Um, because they were established in a different wisdom. And uh, in 9 said, however, as written, no eye has seen, no eye has heard, no man has conceived. What a God prepare for those love Him, for those uh, other places, for those wait on Him, and wins those who are wholeheartedly volunteered to serve Him. And how you serve Him, Jesus said, For the Father love me, I love you. If you love me, follow my teachings. So he's basically talking about. To set the heart as the highest purpose of life, fulfillment of life, to this cultural way. But God revealed to his to us by his spirit. So what was revealed to them by the spirit? This teaching, this culture were revealed to them. And uh, this is the one thread I want to talk about what Paul meant, the things visible and invisible that revealed to them. Now turn with me to another portion we speaking about this in Paul's own word in Ephesians. Top of the family basically. Ephesians we see chapter one. Ephesians chapter one. So talking about the resurrection of power and the glorious inheritance that gave it to the saints, that is in one eighteen. I pray that, Amen, Hallelujah. Uh, let's let's do seventeen. Almost the same thing with the Corinthians, uh, Colossians, uh, as with the shared, almost like to the same prayer that Paul had for the Corinthian church as well. So we see that he has his heart for the church to understand God's plan. Basically, 
I keep asking the Lord, 117, of our Lord, uh, the, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you, who gave them the Spirit? The Father gave them the Spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that you may know Him better. I pray that also your eyes, the eyes of your heart be enlightened, so in order you may know the hope to which I call you, the hope of glory, heavenly, the riches of glory inherited in the saints, in the called out ones, and is incompatible power for us who believe. We often look at this power as if uh, uh, it's a spiritual power or manifesting gifts. When we, we know it's not, but it's, 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 a, it's a governing power, I suggest to you. And his incompatible power, we believe the power is like the working, the mighty strength. That's the, the you know, dominus power. Which exerted in Christ is when he raised him from the dead and seated him in the right hand in the heavenly realms. Raised from the dead is a powerful life. Not seated in the right hand of God, that is the authorization, the power to instill into a place of authority. And then he said this this is a power able to overcome all other powers far above in 21, all rule. Authority, power, dominion, and every title that giving you that basically the rulers of this age, as Paul understood it, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. So how God can place him, he's the first one who is born, he's the beginning, and the firstborn of this order of life, or this new creation life. And then God said, He through him empowered the church call us to be the church in order that this work of reconciliation can be continued on. And in 22 said, God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head, the same concept, over everything for the church, which is the body. The phone is him who fills everything in every way. Now, as a result, because we believe this gospel, we see there is a, a calling into now we out of the world, we believe the gospel, out of the darkness, the kingdom of darkness, and we know that Lord has opened a way for us to deal with all authority powers in the heavenly realms and for us to live a godly life and in practice godly love and uh, even through become a call out people by practicing brotherly love. That's a topic last time we mentioned. Now, I want to talk to you. So, what do you brought out into? You know, if you repented or turned away from one way of life, then what was given to you? In 2 chapter, in 19, verse said in the same book, consequently, because the peace of God is granted to you through the blood of Jesus Christ, you reconcile back to the Father. As a son, consequently, you are no longer aliens. For uh, foreigns and the aliens, but the fellow citizens with God's people and a member of God's household. So there is a two entity here, or two uh, uh, designation of personal entity rather, or two cultures rather. Look at that. The first is the foreigners and the aliens. Foreigners means a kingdom culture is uh, and a play. And the aliens, that is, you know, a family culture or, or, or a race, in a sense, a people, basically, is uh, is uh, is a uh, delineating this kind of differences. And about the fellow citizens with God's people, that's why entity. After you know the foreigner, now you belong to God's people. You're citizen. That means you planted as a a. Member of a kingdom, the other one so the member of God's household means God's family. That means you are no longer an alien. So you are a member that is entitled to the family blessings as we call the family culture. So and then these two culture are to be imparted or to be taught of us. That is the gospel. What it meant to 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 do. So. Let's look at it. Build on the foundation, the apostles, the prophets. So how the apostles, prophets do this? 
they build God's people on the foundation of these two cultures. With Christ Jesus himself, the chief cornerstone. And then talking about become a holy people where God can dwell, basically through the Spirit. Now, this we of being built up, back to Colossians, I don't to seal this down so that nobody argue with us, in a sense, it's all in the scriptures. And uh, so this gospel is to be preached in First Corinthians, uh, Colossians, sorry, in 1 23. And if you continue in your faith, establish a firm, like a building, like a tree, and not move from this hope in the gospel, that is the hope of glory, this is what I'm described as a hope that the Lord came for, and the, he's the beginning and the firstborn from the dead for this, so that the wicked will come out and become glorify people and and bring all things back to God through this gospel. And this is a gospel that you heard and have been claimed to every creature creature on the heaven, of which I Paul become a servant. About this, so said in two six said, So then as you receive Christ Jesus as the Lord, this one who is the king of glory, king of wisdom, he is one who gives you this culture and build you as a citizen of his kingdom and member of God's household, you have to continue to live in him. How you live in him? Being rooted and built up in him. That is built up into a culture based on a culture. Again, there's a whole theme on the girding is a, a rebuke to individualism, individual ways that, that dominated the Christian teaching through the ages. Basically, how personal can be fulfilled through God. But uh, it's a we, how God said, I want to be blessed to become my holy people, and you have to serve these people as a set apart minister for me, uh, you know, to serve the gospel, serve this ministry, reconciliation. And a different way to look at how you evangelize people, how to disciple people, how to fellowship with others uh, on the name of God. So in 2.7 says, rooted and built up in him. How you are to be rooted and built up in him, it's always through a culture. And strengthening the faith that you're taught and overflow with thanksgiving. So then he said, he warned, like John was in First John, do not be taken captive by other hollow or deceptive philosophies. And all those things is in Paul's idea. Is the things empowered or give uh, the uh, mastery to the ruler of this age who is uh, coming to nothing. And they are dominating us through the way all these things, what is right or wrong, what is good or bad, this is the philosophy or the governing uh, values. And um, in the slide, we know that Christ is clearly imparted through his teaching and even given to the uh, apostles as Peter and John and Paul uh, explicitly expressed a vision of his family, a vision what the people of God should look like. And they are not marked, first thing, the word knowledge of the scriptures, per se. They're not all um, uh, 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 marked by the enthusiasm about this or that, per se. They're not all uh, marked by the flourishing of the manifesting gifts, per se. They're marked by one thing. That is a vision what it means to be a set apart of people for God. And this is paramount important, and that is expressed through Jesus Christ. And the we hold the love one another. It is not humanist love, not the religious ideas of love, but a unique love that the Father has hidden through the ages, that the Son is the Son to us to reveal so that we can be introduced and able to practice that love. And uh, in 15th chapter, John the Gospel, again, let's look at this, said it. In 
fifteen twelve said, "My command is this: Love each other as I have loved you." Now, have you heard believers or unenlightened mind compel you to love them in certain way, discarded at the expense of God's culture? And the and the, this is what religion people do. What is manifest in religious people? The biggest thing is walking deception, walking the distorted or unholy ways of develop God relationships、uh, in the name of God, and this requires have a huge problem with the Jews and his day because why? Because they try to impute their own ministry, their own ideas, or what it means to be God's people. And expense of rejecting his message, what it means to be God's people. So there is a clash of culture is is here, and eventually he was so、uh, rejected, he was crucified by them, and right. So he 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 wept over them. You know, he he cannot do anything to them, and, and they were. He said they were poor and wretched, whatever the word. You know, yet they were not willing to come to him. My point, alluding to you today, is you as a chosen people of God, you are caught into the same tension, same conflict, same struggle with unenlightened mind and stubborn people, and we have to learn to stay the course, to keep the vision, to keep the standard, and it's a difficult thing to do because these things we are expect to be spoken evil of, to be rejected. And not welcome because other ways of flourishing in this regard. On the team, pray for us. Team, pray for us. Yes. Are you there still? Team is not there. Okay. Wes, pray for us. Bless the Lord. We're here. You are here. Then you pray for us, brother. Lord, we do pray for a continued revelation and clarity of this. Truth, reality, kingdom, and culture that you set out, ordained for your people from the very beginning. Lord, we confess that in ourselves and as as a people, as a as mankind as a whole, Lord, we have missed this truth to create our own culture, our own way of life. Lord, even as the apostle said, in such a self-centered way, what a grievance it must be to your heart, Lord, for the many generations, even of those who call upon your name, not to be able to take up the the work of of establishing the culture of your kingdom, the culture of your house, your family, and to be able to receive the benefits of it. Which is the true inheritance that you have to give, and the true fellowship that you have and offer as the Father through the Son.、Mm. Lord, may we be a people, not because of our own ability or effort or even knowledge, Lord, but because of our desire to know you, to be led by you, and to know your ways, Lord. May we be a people that is able to begin to practice this culture and see its fruits and its blessings, not only in our own lives but in the context of all creation, as you designed it to be. That the flourishing, the flourishing of this way of life, would bring life and blessing to everything you made.、Hmm. Lord, I pray that we would see that. Lord, first in our own lives and our families and our fellowship here, Lord, in the、mm. spirit, Lord, but also as a functioning kingdom、mm. in the earth,、mm. Lord, for all the principalities and powers to see,、mm. and what the enemy has long feared to see established in the earth, Lord, even that stone hewn from the mountain, but not by man's hands, Lord, that would bring. All the rules of man,、mm. all the kingdoms of the earth, every other rule that is not yours, Lord, to、mm. nothing,、mm. so that your kingdom and your life and way can be fully established, Lord.、Mm. 
Lord, let us rise up. Spirit, go beyond the, the mental capacities of this life and forge on in the spirit to take hold of this kingdom for your glory. Mm. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come with me to thank you, brothers. John the Gospel again. Mm. There were a few Greeks in 12 chapter 20. So um, at the time, you know, it was um, Hosanna, so it was um, China for entry, uh, Palm Sunday, I believe. And um, so this is prior to the conversation we had. Uh, uh, we just visited Jesus Christ on the Passover meal. And uh, there were Greeks come to try to sort him out. And they came to Jesus 21 now. 12 chapter, John the Gospel 21, they came to Philip and uh, they, they said, Sir, would like to see Jesus. So Philip told Andrew, Andrew and Philip then in turn told Jesus. So here, and Jesus answered them. Uh, you might have heard me uh, talk about the different angles of this, but today I have another angle. In a sense, what is Jesus thinking? You know, what, why is he thinking? What, what is his his intent. This is a high moment, am I right? He come to Palm Sunday, he's not gonna die. He, he is very careful about every interaction he was ha he was having. And he didn't know this two Gentile, two greats, came to him, not just like the donkey gave to him, was not just coincidence. So we in the learn, because recorded by, you know, uh, John, also, they were learning something so mighty that it's shocking to them. And we know that he continued to tell the disciples give up earthly life. That is a Jewish culture, you know. There's no problem for them to give up earthly enjoyment, to follow this wonderful uh, man of God. They would do that with John the Baptist, with any man, you know, those uh, God-loving men and willing to do everything for God. They have no problem with that. But they have... Uh, always have stumbled over when Jesus said, this what is I'm doing for my people. This is what I want you to learn and become teacher this way of life. Because as the Corinthians, the great culture, and the other Jews, you know, continue to stumble because it's a culture clash as it cannot forego the kind of leans uh, of of examination, you know, you look at the lens, you know, so you look at things differently. Or oh, the kind of language we sing, or well, the program language, the program govern the interface. So they can't let it go, you know. So and uh, so that that's only platform they have. So we see this continue challenge them in this regard. Okay. Amen. Who is uh, who is there? Uh, there are a lot of background noises. Okay, so anyway, so in 21 said, Jesus replied to this very unique occasion, said that the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. He brings us to guys, you know, uh, the Philip and Andrew looking at him, supposed to entertain these people, you know, at least sh 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 a community with these people, but he did not. He opens his mouth and do teachings. He says, Glory, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Means of him, he sees this two men, which are great, not his own people. He recognized instantly the plan of God to look beyond what's going to happen to him and between the Jews, uh, among the Jews. He knows that there is a day that the God's going to reach beyond the Jews. For sure, that is there. But above all, how it reached beyond the Jews is merely because his uh, gifts, his uh, mighty ministry, or he learned repute, he was the center of attention in the public. No, he knows something else going to transform the culture, you know, a father draw them to it, to him. And he's reflecting on himself, he's speaking to testify, you know, in order for that to happen, I had to die. And 24 said, I tell you the truth. Unless the colonel weight falls to the ground and dies, 
it remains only a single seed. But if it die, it produces many seeds, and they have to be the same kind of seeds. The man who loves his life, he began to tell them, "Why the great draw to him? Why and the rough they、really、come to him? They come to him with a culture, with a tradition, with their expectations." And Jesus said, "I'm not going to entertain that. So you got to let that go." And、uh, he said, "While a man, <laughs> he said, any the man who loves life will lose it, that the man who his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And let's understand eternal life is a more than just life and resurrection from the dead. You know, can have a blissful, weird life in the future, never die. Basically, his will for expressing eternal life has the." Everything to do with the culture for love gone. This was just emphasized in the beginning. Now, twenty six said, "Whoever serves me, serves me." Means you know, you know those terms. Serve means as a slave. And I don't claim any right. So he said, "Whoever you guys want to know me, to learn me, whoever serves me must follow me." In the word. Following Greek, or as has everything to do with become a a willing and good disciple, basically. And wherever I am, my servant also will be. Amen. Hallelujah. He's saying he's drawing men to him, and they are to stay. They stay not because they are doing wonderful ministry, but they are staying. In the way how this culture to be practiced, and my father will also honor the one who serves me. So how you serve him by obey his teachings, and how you serve him by love one another in the vision of life or in the culture life he want to impart to them, and then and that something miraculous happened, which is a. You look at it. There's a lot of miracle happened, but a few times the father showed up. We know the transfiguration. The father showed up, and there's you know the father showed up on his day of baptism. This is one little occasion.、Uh, also, the father showed up, began to speak to people. You know when Lazarus was resurrected. But this is one occasion says、uh, no, no particular circumstances unless we understand. This actually one of the highlighted moment in Christ's walk in the midst of a man. This is something very, very powerful, and the Father and the Son is looking forward to this moment testimony. And the Father spoke from heaven, so that means this world occasion is a is a no less important than for Peter. And John and what the other one, Andrew maybe. So saw Jesus being transfigured in glorious light, you know, and able to converse with Moses and Elijah on the mountain top. That's amazing testimony. And Peter, you know, was a little bit、um, puzzled by that experience, you know, and the moment. And Jesus, the Lord, the Father, spoke from heaven. You know, from from above, and here the same same occasion happened almost in the sense. I want to tell you this: what I try to emphasize is this is such impact moment. There's a reason the father song together did this, and it was now registered very well in the people and the moment, and he said.、Uh, You know, Father, glorify your name. Because then the voice come from heaven said, "I have glorified it. I will glorify it again." So, in essence, then this is the King of Glory. I try to emphasize this. Then how he glorified Jesus, how he passed on this ministry, all this life of internal life、uh, as as ministry. You know, as ministry passed on to the early church said. They there could become many seeds, you know, become a many harvested by into the barn of God, and、uh, 
Evidently, this we a glorification is a more than a moment that Christ raised from the dead, or even he sits at the right hand of God. It's more than a moment that it's some uh, miraculous thing happening, but it's、uh, a revelation. This glorification basically is a revelation of a culture, of a culture. The Word become a flesh. And the, he's the beginning, and the firstborn from the dead. Now this dead seed able to bear many fruits, to produce many fruits, and the, then with that, the crowd was there heard it said, "It thunder." Others said, "Angels spoke to them to a puzzle," and then, and Jesus began to testify. He said, "This voice was for your benefit." Not for mine. This is what Jesus is saying. Look, you guys all look at me for something, but you can't really hear me. And the Father wants to wake you up. The saying, what I'm saying, is not a small mantra, and you need to pay attention to it. This is for your benefit. So your ears can be opened, your heart can be opened, and be enlightened to what I'm really saying to you. And what he's saying to them is not that he was a great healer, a great teacher, a great、uh, even the Messiah. He he he's saying that I have a message for the way of life. Will populate humankind. Will give new birth to a new creation. And you are invited into this new birth. In the And then let's look on. Said thirty one. Now is the time for the judgment of this world. So why this world being given? His world will judge those who reject him and those who believe him and practice the message. Let me not receive the gospel. And now, interesting enough, by this message, by this revelation, this thing, the prince's world will be driven out. Wow, can you believe that? That means the dislodging the authority power of the evil one is through the impartation of this wisdom, and this wisdom pertains to eternal life. But the eternal life has a great to do with how we live our life as God's chosen people, and then the holy chosen people, and eventually a royal priesthood. And、uh, but now when I lift it up, he said, "When I lift it up, so that was lower down, or cut down from his own throne, and the Lord lift it up to his throne, and I lift it up from the earth. I will draw all men unto me. How he draw on unto me? And、uh, we would think it's through because it receives a name, worship. He has a way. He has a way. Turn with me to." Thirteenth chapter, not the same book. He said, "Amen, Hallelujah, Hallelujah." In thirty-one, he said, "When he was gone, Jesus said." So someone went, that is Judas, through the Passover meal, and Jesus said, "Waiting for the moment." He's waiting for the beating his time. He said, "Now, now." He's waiting, you know, every step of the way. Where's the donkey? Where is the man going to give us room to have the supper? Uh, where I suppose declare the message uh, to enable uh, what's your fate? Enable them to be,、uh, you know, the 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 minister for this new covenant. And then when the devil going to enter in Judah, and he going to betray me. And then after that, what going to do? And this were moment, he waiting for the moment. He said, when Judah is gone, and he said. Now is the Son of Man glorified. Wow! Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in Him. So we see the former word said, "The voice from heaven declare, 'I will glorify, I will glorify again.'" And Jesus understood how He to be glorified. Often think He is resurrected; He is sitting on the throne was glorified, but Jesus said, "No." It's when I am the colonel, 
that is sold to the ground died, and you guys are raised up to be the new seed to be sown to the earth. All the harvesters in the fields of man, and he said, "This whole I'm glorified. I'm glorified through you. You are my glory." Paul. Later days understood this principle. He said to the Gentile church, he said somewhere, he said, "Don't you know you're my glory? You know I'm waiting for Christ be chosen to you. I'm waiting for Christ be formed fully in you. I'll be chosen to Christ. Sorry, you know. So all this making sense. But now this is the sum. That word moment. That word moment. Now is the Son of Man glorified. A God glorified in Him." Wow! What happened? Nothing happened. There's no voice, no miracle, nothing. Not even a willing agreement or knowledgeable agreement. None of them fully understand what he's saying. And yet he said, "No, this were a moment. You guys approved and received by the Father and sealed as my." Chosen ones, and、uh, and it will be for you to、uh, be my embodiment of、uh, the vision and the work that it entrusts to me. With all authority and power, you will teach others this way or this culture for life. And this whole I'm lifted up from the earth through you. I'm the head of you. You are my body. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now the Son of Man glorified it, and God is glorifying Him. If God is glorifying Him, He begins to tell them, "Cause this works, God will glorify the Son in Himself, and will glorify Him at once." Amen. Hallelujah. If God is glorifying in Him, that means in Him, that is His body. And glorify him, the Son in Himself, that is elevate him to the to the heavenly realm, sitting at the right hand of God, and will glorify him in once. That means a moment in time. This covenant, this grace, this ministry is started, put in effect. Then he said, interesting. Look at the word. He said, "My children, <laughs> my little ones, I'll be with you only a little longer." You will look for me, just as I told the Jews. But I tell you now, where I'm going, you can come. And the, so he said, "Where I'm going, you have not able to approach it. But you are here on earth. You are to continue my teaching and become、uh, my people." And、uh, then he said, thirty-four. He said, "This whole I am to be glorified. This whole I am lifted up. A new command." I give you love one another as I loved you. So you must love one another. By this, all men will know you are my disciples if you love one another. So how he love one another? We again emphasize in last session and continue this session the kind of love that different than humanist love. The we how we love and this love. Is has less to do how we feel or individually how we position our lives, but it has everything to do with this we of a culture. This father has a plan for mankind, and he has this word in the beginning: want to be embodied, become a dwelling place, become a flesh in man. So, which the son was given. And、uh, become the head of this church, this new people. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a marvelous thing! But it was a wonderful thing, and it was most difficult thing for us to embrace. We know it was very difficult for the disciple to embrace. My point is that this plan was ever the vision the Lord has for His、uh, ministry. And for his uh, uh, teaching to the disciples, especially when he、uh, enabled them to disciple others, come with me to Matthew chapter Matthew.
I want to tell you something else. In the whole Jesus Christ in other places, speaking his idea of this family. So it's a call out people, and the people supposed to practice different culture.、Uh, however, those ideas are not alien、uh, from man's experience. Actually, they are shadowed、uh, and tied、uh, prior to. To uh to Jesus and even through the law of the prophets, that's why Jesus said, "I come not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it." You know the law of the prophets, and how he fulfilled it through this way to call out a holy people and to a people who are able to uphold practice culture and then bring us or reconcile them through this culture back to God. Now. In a very unique place in Matthew nineteen, again talking the little ones, little bit we recently mentioned. Now he finished saying certain thing. He's saying now there are brothers against brothers, and there's a、uh, you know you're supposed to serve one another in a certain way after the transfiguration. Actually, then basically how the practice brought love in 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 the in the body Christ. So he come to. Um, in nineteen, the beginning, he left Galilee and went to the region of Judea, on the other side of Jordan, and、uh, and then he ministered there. So some Pharisees came to him to test him. The lucky they did to John. He said, "Is it lawful?" In nineteen, three verses, and is it lawful for the man to divorce his life for any and every reason? And have you not read? I'm speaking about concerning the concept that he can't fulfill the law of the prophets. So Jesus said, "Have you not read that at the beginning, Amen? It's the beginning. At the beginning, the Creator made them male and the female, and He said, 'For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh.'" Hmm. Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Is that amazing? And so they are no longer two, but the one. They are one. Therefore, what God joined together, let no one separate. So, this is basically a look to the beginning intent of God for man and woman were created. They were created meant to embody something. Yet the Pharisees are legalistic. That these lawyers, you know, they always picking. They said, "Well, you know, they didn't hear the essence of the spirit of law. They don't understand why it mattered for marriage to be together." And there's a big on it. No, no, no. We we have to divorce. They said we have to deal with those situations. What do we do? And、uh, so they said, "Why then did the Moses command and a man gives wife a certificate of divorce and send her away?" They basically said, "Well, you can't tell them God don't do this. You know, or this not allowed by God." Basically, it's a false argument, and Jesus replied, "Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts are hard, your heart hardened." Now we often say, "Hard hardened towards what?" We look to yes, hardened towards one another as husband and wife. Maybe maybe the human love has cooled down; they become a、uh, not able to you know appreciate one another. But evidently, this was not his target. And when he talked about the heart and the heart, he's speaking of the human race. At the time when God gave the law to Moses, they were incapable to understand the intent of Him at that time anymore. They were so、uh, caught into the spirit of the world and the wind of the world. They were not able to understand. Why God created a man in the very beginning, and give man as a woman and man to become a a family? Basically, the essence. By the time, especially with the way how the Pharisees engages, the understanding of family was totally distorted and disregarded. That the intent God has in studio family. From the beginning, for mankind, is totally lost. 
even the saints want to buy the Lola Mosses, try to do the right thing, yet the heart was not able to appreciate and embrace the intended God for family. What amazing revelation. I mean, for them should be, they should be overwhelmed. Wow, you know, if that is the case, then how we do family? If I'm a good disciple, that should my, be my natural reason. Rather than saying, okay, we have reason to this, you must be wrong. You know, we know better or we not doing, uh, we're doing this okay. You know, it's supposed to humbly said, yes, Lord, then tell us how to be restored to the origin of God, the uh, origin intended God. How we can practice the culture then? How can you invite God back to our midst and become that chosen people, become that holy people? And then, the, you know, yes, most of our teacher, but how we become that people that are righteous even in the sight of God? But they could not. And they could not. Now, if, if, if the disciples have even could not understand this, they're still thinking, again, as you the word, Call their lens of their own culture, the lens of their own culture. Now, um, he said in nine, Jesus said, I tell you that anyone divorces his wife except for mar marital unfaithfulness and marries another woman commit adultery. So what that means? So they didn't call the attention to Jesus Christ, try to refer or bring them back to the intent of the Father uh, of God. Uh, when he created the man and woman to become a family unit, he, he, they concentrate on idolatry now. So said, Jesus said, but the disciples he said, if this is usually between a husband and wife, they said, it's very difficult to be, it is better not to marry. And Jesus said, understand the weakness of man, he said, yeah, not everyone can accept this word, but only those to whom it has been given. Not everyone can accept means acknowledge and practice the word. In 2012 said, for some are units, for some are units. He said, what's well, very difficult to practice if you concentrate the natural endowment and regulations of your life. But if you know who God is, and why God created man? What he intended through this transitional life, this dying age? What he eventually is going to be ushered in through the gospel and my teachings? Then you will have a different taking around of how, what it means to conduct yourself in the family, uh, or in the ways of family, in the ways of organize your life in different uh, you know, um, uh, uh, what the word, I don't know, quite a word, basically different engagements, you know, different um, ways of how you relate to one another, basically. He said, not everyone can do that, but only those who are able to accept it and uh, able to practice it, basically. For, then he said this, for some are units because they were born that way, as were made that way by men. And as we have renounced marriage because of the kingdom of heaven. So three kind cannot reproduce, basically. And so the one who accepts this should accept it. So what do you mean here? It's ridiculous response we think in the natural way of thinking. Why he is saying this? Because Christ has the idea that the family continues should have children. And um, you know, whether you're able to, to be barren, whatever the reason become a barren, it doesn't matter. And they are barren indeed. They're not able to continue the lineage, basically. Now, God, Jesus said, I basically want you to become fruitful, to practice my culture and able through my discipleship to reproduce God's lineage. And you are not able to receive it because you don't believe that is the life you can have. And that is the teaching I try to give to you. 
is still confined by your natural endowment of life. The way is how you position your life as a natural man. So uh, that's what he's saying. Then the little children come to him. You know the story. He said, such is uh, the ones who are going to you know, enter the kingdom of heaven. My point of making is you can see Jesus Christ visited from the beginning. God created a man. Then the idea, whole family is put together, in this case, wife and husband, to be united together. And the concerning whole God through most of the law, supposed to be. But he brings essence. He said basically all of this, whether before Moses, that is from the beginning to from Adam, and then after Moses, we have a chosen people, have a law, and all of this has not changed the heart of man, the heart and the heart concerning what a family look like. But now I want you to become a fruitful sons of God. And in this, he is not so concerned how the construct natural family is supposed to look like, which we will talk actually about the, how God intended for our family, natural family, be organized and practice what it means to be a father, be a husband, be a wife, be a brother, sister. But this was fully understood by the apostles later on. The devote their life to this gospel and they emphasize the essence of this gospel. Therefore, they were able to, to understand why the law was given. Turn with me to Galatians now. We're going to wrap it up here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, in Galatians, in Galatians, in 3.15, said the brothers, hallelujah, hallelujah, sorry, let me see. Um, in 14, rather, said, in here speaking about Christ become a per curse to so reconcile everyone back to God or justify uh, us before God. And in 14, 3, 14, said, He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to Gentiles, like the two Greeks, through Christ Jesus. So then by faith we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of Sonship. And brothers, he continued, said, Paul said, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as one who can set aside the end of the human covenant has been duly established, but the marriage maybe, so it is in this case, the promise that is spoken to Abraham and to his seed, the father's son, and the spirit does not say to the seeds, meaning many people, but to your seed, meaning one person who is the Messiah, which I mean this law introduced 430 years later, does not set aside the common proofs established by God, this do away with the promise. Why well, I mention this? Because Abraham was a father of the Hebrews. You know, Abraham proceeded before Moses. And God answered the Israelites in the time of Moses because he had a covenant with Abraham. So it's a covenant of promise and with a certain kind of family in his mind. And we mentioned recently actually through the laying on hand teaching, speaking about God intended for a particular family. Therefore, he set a contrast between those who are able to honor is a promise through the, the patriarchs, and those were not like Esau, like uh, uh, what the other one, and, you know, other space cities that were not honoring Ishmael, maybe not honoring this 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 promise of God, and they will have had to be to cut off from this will of inheritance or passing on the family traditions. In eighteen said. In 3.18, for if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God in his grace gave Abraham through the promise. Hallelujah. So it is given through a, through a promise. And by this promise, by this promise, hallelujah, hallelujah, in 22 now. But the scripture declares that this whole world is a prisoner of sin. 
that is the groaning sigh longing to be liberated. How to be liberated through the sounds of God. And how the sounds of God came about by embracing this will of teaching, this will of life through Christ Jesus ministry. Amen. But the scripture declared the whole world is present so that a word of promise being given through faith in Christ might be given those who believe. Before this faith come, we were held prisoner by the law. Lock it up until faith should be revealed. So this faith when revealed, we're prisoner. No one can be a son. Prisoner means a slave here. It means a slave like Egypt. Uh, under Egypt's rule, the Israelites was enslaved. And they were not able to enter the promised land. So this reprocessory had to roll away. That is, their identity had to change. They can't be a slave. In this same book, speaking of Hagar and the Sarah representing the son of a free woman and the son of a slave woman. So here they were locked up as a slave woman, as a sons of a slavery. And uh, so the law well, in, 20, 20, uh, in 23 now, the faith comes, we were held, we were held in prison by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. And when this faith revealed, is that this sonship came to be, this new family of God, this is a true family God through mankind rather, began to be uh, put into effect began to be formed. And so in continuous 24 said, so the laws of putting in charge, that is like a garden, like a tutorship, to a guardianship or tutorship to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Now then faith has come, has been revealed to us. So we are no longer aliens, strangers to God. We are no longer under the supreme of the law. We are no longer slaves or in bondage. We are no longer under a covenant that is cursed by uh, the impossibility to become the seed that is endowed with the promised inheritance. Now we are legitimate sons. We can be done the rightful heirs for God. Then in 26 said, you are all sons God through faith in Christ Jesus. So there is a, a change. We all know this, but let me emphasize concerning the family. Now, in this family, then, in this original intent of God's family, whether even through the marital covenant, was meant to reveal something that is greater. What is that greater? That is a life as a son of God through our faith in Christ Jesus. And that is the spiritual life. This is why I tried to tell Nicodemus in the beginning, talking about the born again, that there is a fellowship, there is a way of love, there is a culture that is from heaven, and is claiming and reconciling and want to embody or made, manifest, become flesh in a people, in a chosen people. Here in this, all conventions of mind, all traditions of mind is, uh, is uh, being made known, rather being fulfilled. The thing that God uh, shadowed or planted is being finally fulfilled. And this is a culture that the Lord said, this will bring glory to me. As the daily Passover meal, he said, now the Son of Man is glorified. Through what? Because those that was with him at the table was able to enter into this new covenant, which is more than a way of eternal life, but also a ministry of reconciliation, and that they become sons of God, co heirs with him in the Father family. Now, in 23, 26, verse 3, uh, Colossians said, we are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you were baptized into Christ and clothe yourself with Christ. That is, change our identity. 29, 28 said that there is a neither Jew nor great. All those human traditions, human barriers, human identities disappeared. 
neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. All those ruling principles, ruling authorities, all those conventions of wisdom man disappeared. But one way of life is revealed. With it, the culture of God's family. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, um, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. How you become one in Christ? Not by personal endowment or so many propose as if we're so anointed, so outwardly, but by become that unique chosen people, know how to one another and taught established by him. If you belong to Christ, 29, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. Hallelujah. This is a way of our glorification. Turn with me to Hebrew. I sum it up today and we do some prayer. I'm sorry, this is today's a teaching session, so not much interaction. In two chapter of Hebrew, two chapter, speaking about subject and everything, everything I put on his fate, and he was the one as a first seed, first established in this hope of glory. And then in 10, 210 said, in bringing many sons to glory, it was a fitting that God for whom and through whom, so this is the ultimate wisdom. This is the ultimate ruling order. This is the ultimate culture. Amen. That's what we're talking about. Christ defined it as the family God or the kingdom God, all the fellowship with him. Amen. By the power of the Spirit. He bring many sons to glory with a feeling that God for whom the through whom everything exists. Remember Colossians, the portion we mentioned, and should make the authors of salvation perfect through suffering. Both the one who make man holy and those who are made holy are, are for the same family. Amen. They are the same family. So Jesus Christ is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I'll declare your name to my brother. That is, I'll make your name known, he said, in other places. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing a praise. There is a fellowship there. There is a gathering there. And the, as the Hebrew continued later, they said, later, late, later chapter said, do not forsake seek this assembly. In 12 chapters speaking about this, the people, of Zion. Amen. Hallelujah. And again, 13 said, I will put my trust in him. Uh, concerning this holy people, when he is raised up, he will draw all men to him. Through what? Through a culture of divine love, through this way of discipleship, the teaching. And then again, he said, Here I am. Here am I. And the little ones, the children, and God has given to me. With that, we sum up today's teachings. We're going to have others to pray for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody volunteer to pray? Let's pray together. Wrap it up. So. I'm so sorry. The teaching so, and um, with uh, everybody muted, no interaction, a little bit awkward for me. I hope we, you catch up with it, however. So. Hello? Amen. Let's pray together. It's good. Amen. <laughs> Everybody muted, so there's no voice whatsoever. It's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you. Mm. Hallelujah. Wes is there, pray for us, Wes, and Brad, pray for us, everybody pray for us, take turn to pray. Amen. I hope this, this message uh, encourages you. It's a, it's a, it's the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We should be encouraged and celebrate the truth. Amen. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
it's awkward for you. I'm sorry, but it's uh, I, I really appreciate it. Okay. Um, but we do thank you. Well, we thank you that you desire a family, that you are not a a far off God, mm -hmm. that you are a God who desires and brings about the fullness of your family, mm -hmm. that you have chosen us. Mm -hmm. We thank you that we get to give you our lives and receive something far greater, mm -hmm. your, your eternal reality, mm -hmm. your love. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray that you bless us, that, that we receive all that you are. Mm. That our familial binds are, are strong, Lord, that mm. your love and wisdom is shared amongst us, mm. that as you share with one, we are all strengthened. Mm. Lord, that as, as, you, as you share your, your mighty gift, as our family read this morning, the, mm. the multiplication of the bread and the fish, Lord, you, mm. Jesus took it to you in prayer, but then he handed it to the disciples who handed it to the people. Mm -hmm. Lord, you share your goodness mm. to those who give themselves to you, mm. so that all who are hungry mm. can know you. Mm. Lord, we give you our lives. Bless yourself in this world. Mm. And yeah. thank you, Jesus, for being our way. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. I have a scripture that's good to feed. Let me read it with you. In 102, Psalm 102, the, the team read it for us. Amen. Hallelujah. In 12, from 12 to. To 22, maybe. So. Hmm. Me and mm. O Lord, sit enthroned forever. Your renown endures through all generations. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to show favor to her. Mm. The appointed time has come. Mm. For her her stones are dear to your servants. Mm. Her very dust moves them pity. Mm. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will reveal, revere your glory. Mm. For the Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in his glory. Mm. He will respond to the prayer of the destitute. Yes, he will Lord. not despise their plea. Mm. Let this be written for a future generation mm. that a people not yet created may praise the Lord. Mm. The Lord looked down from his sanctuary on high. From heaven he viewed the earth to hear the groans of the prisoners and release those condemned to death. Mm. So the name of the Lord will be declared in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples and the kingdoms assemble to worship the Lord. What a wonderful picture. Summing up our teaching world, Bill. Team, pray for us and wrap it up for us. Bless us. Bless us. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen. Lord, I bless your people. May, may your people, Lord, truly know their identity, mm. their destiny calling 
and their name. Mm. Not a name of their own, not a life of their own, mm. or even as Brother West play, uh, pray <laughs> that we have this joy to lay down our lives so that we can take up something far greater, which is something eternal. Yeah. Not just of your nature, but the very essence of your nature. Amen. The very life that <laughs> is emanates from you. Mm. Lord, and in this, may it all return to you. Mm. Mm. Lord, may this very groaning that is in us, mm. Lord, that groaning that goes deeper than the mind and the flesh and the soul, as a tree. Where your spirit within us grows. Mm. Lord, where all creation groans mm. in this life. Yes. Your, your sons might be revealed. Mm. That this culture might be unveiled and revealed as the splendor of your glory. Mm. As the, the full expression of your wisdom. Mm. Because it will go far beyond anything that this age has ever known mm. and the rulers of this age have ever experienced mm. that being the kingdom of your life and love mm. and is expressed through your family mm. <laughs> the, the culture of your family yes. lord this is what we come to you in this moment in time to ask lord not for riches and fame and power and, mm. and, and a name in the earth mm. or a legacy in the earth, yes. but that we may be partakers of your life mm. and recipients mm. of your inheritance, which is your glory, mm. the fullness of your life. Mm. Mm. So may the Lord bless his people, the people of his name. Mm. For his name's sake. Mm. Amen. 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 What a wonderful, wonderful prayer. Hey, other scripture read Isaiah 51, 1 to 16, and the chapter as a whole, 61, 62. So, yeah, you understand. <coughs> this is a, a theme that is, is through, through the Bible, especially concerning prophecies written to our Lord Jesus Christ and his purpose that is he is to bring about the holy people. Amen. With that bless you all and be richly blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Continue to strengthen the Lord. Be established the Lord. We have a lot of things going on in this world. In with your lives. And the Lord be with you. And the Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Is, is it okay if I pray, brother? Yes, please do. Is it okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Lord, we Lord, we just do thank you, Lord, for for this time, Lord. Every time that your people can gather, Lord, mm. um, is a time where where you move, Lord, uh, is a brooding, Lord, in your presence and in your spirit, um, Lord, where you do produce, Lord, a life, um, Lord, you, where you send your rains, Lord, you send your sunlight, you send your nourishing mm. um, growth, Lord, by your spirit, and in, in, into our hearts and, in, and into our spirit, Lord. It's the very nature of what. Brother Emmanuel was sharing about abiding in the vine, Lord, um, the reality of abiding in the Spirit. Mm. Uh, and so, Lord, I pray that we do have the strength uh, to contend, Lord, to to remain there and abide there. Paul uh, shared it as, as an obligation that we have. Mm. Uh, and as Jesus shared, uh, as, as soon as he shared as well, that, um, that we have to abide for life, mm -hmm. uh, abiding in the vine, and that apart from that, there's no way. And so, Lord, I pray uh, for the increasing of faith and strength, mm. the building of this temple, of our of, of this life, yes, uh, with materials that stand uh, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of all the the the, the things that occur in this life, Lord, that, <laughs> that be made strong and stand and endure. Um, so, Lord, we pray for that, Lord, and by the by the strengthening shelter of your power, Lord, your house stands firm and protected where a family can indeed grow. 
Uh, and a culture of protection of love and kindness and gentleness and mercy and graciousness mm. um, Lord, where the where the thorns and the thistles are bundled and cast out and burned mm. uh, Lord that the, that that the, your great love and power and strength and hope and joy uh, be 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 nourished and filled in or uh, into and produced Lord that indeed a light <laughs> might be gone That's in right. the midst of chaos and anxiety and depression and fear and all the things that the enemy tries to do to tear down this mind and truth, uh, Lord, that we can stand as as pillars, Lord, of hope and of righteousness, not of our own, but, but by your spirit, the work that you've produced uh, by producing a a mature, strong people, Lord, those who, who have the strength by, by your spirit to stand, Lord, so help us to do that, Lord. Amen. Um, thank you, Lord, and praise your name. Amen. 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 Wonderful br- prayer. Thank you, brother. I was thinking about that in my prior time, thinking about the storm, the seasons, and the good plan of the Lord. Amen. Okay, we'll wrap it up. And uh, hey, thank you for staying with us. It's pretty late there in Austin. So, guys, sleep good. Wayne, it's good to see you, brother. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Have a great night. Uh, you too. Yeah. All of you, John, you sleep tight, you okay? So, yeah. Amen. We'll Bring our you. best, okay? Okay. You guys, huh? Okay, okay, bye. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Hey, no. <laughs> yeah. Bless the Lord, indeed. Okay, guys. Okay? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh.